Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. The shell, middens, or mounds of ancient Europe and the sons of the biblical Japheth. Europe is the second smallest continent, and it could be described as a large peninsula or as a subcontinent. Europe is the western portion of the Eurasian landmass and is located entirely in the northern hemisphere. Several larger islands belong to Europe, such as Iceland or the British Isles, with the UK and Ireland. Europe is 20% larger than the contiguous United States. How many countries are there in Europe? Europe is shared by 50 countries. In the population, an estimated 747 million people live in Europe. Here, we have two maps one of modern Europe and the other of biblical Europe on the right. If you are not a student of a biblical history, you may not be familiar with the names of the countries or nation states of biblical ancient Europe. Tadish, in the place where Spain stands today, and Gomer, the ancient name of France, and Ashkenaz, the ancient name of Germany, and Magog, the ancient name of Russia, and Contem, the ancient name of Italy and Cyprus, and Javan, the ancient name of Greece. The ancient nations of Europe were the survivors of the great biblical flood. They were descended from the children of Noah's son, Japheth. Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their wives survived the global Biblical flood. After the global flood, the world was repopulated by the children of Noah. You can read about this in Genesis chapter 6 through 10. Also, you can research this history in the book Antiquities of the Jews by Flavius Josephus. After what manner the posterity of Noah sent out colonies and inhabited the whole earth. After this, they were dispersed abroad on account of their languages and went out by colonies everywhere. And each colony took possession of that land which they light upon, and unto which God led them, so that the whole continent was filled with them, both the inland and maritime countries. There were some also 
who pass over the sea and ships and inhabited the islands. And some of those nations do still retain the denomination which were given them by their first founders. But some have lost them also, and some only omitted certain changes in them, that they might be more intelligible to the inhabitants. And they were the Greeks who became the authors of such mutations. For when in after ages the Greeks grew potent, they claimed to themselves the glory of iniquity, giving names to the nations that sounded well in Greek, that they might be better understood among themselves, among the Greeks, and setting agreeable forms of government over them as if they were a people derived from themselves, from the Greeks. Chapter 6 How Every Nation Was Denominated or Named From Their First Inhabitants Now they were the grandchildren of Noah, in honor of whom names were imposed on the nations by those that first seized upon them. Japhet, the son of Noah, had seven sons. They inhabited so that the beginning at the mountain Taurus and Armenus, they proceeded along Asia as far as the river Tanis, which is the river Don today, and along Europe to Cadiz or Spain, and setting themselves on the lands which they light upon, which none had inhabited before. They called the nations by their own names, such as Tarish, Gomer, Ashkenaz, Magog, Kittim, and Javan. And on the right, we have the shell middens of Europe with the anthropology to consider the history and identity of the first inhabitants of Europe. And for some more information on the map of shell middens or mounds of Europe, you can research into the Quaternary International Journal an article, Shell Middens Research in Atlantic Europe, State of the Art, Research Problems and Perspectives for the Future. And on this map, I highlighted three red circles where some of these middens were located in Europe. Shell mounds or middens of Europe. And this is a quote from the book, Ancient and Modern Britons, Volume 1. I shall be inclined to look among the Palpian races of New Guinea and New Holland for the nearest allies or relatives of men to whom the shell mounds or shell middens of Europe once belonged in Tasmania. In Australia and Tasmania, men with dark skins and woolly hair. And on the left is an image of a man from Tasmania who skeletons, remains, skulls, and anthropology. These are the men that inhabited the shell mounds of Europe the first inhabitants. Shell middens of Florida that belong to Native Americans.
Rethinking Shell Middens Mounds of shells left by prehistoric people used to be considered mere trash. Now researchers recognize they can be monumental works of architecture that provide key insights into ancient cultures. For more on the topic of shell middens, Anthropogenic Soils by Jeffrey Howard. A midden, kitchen midden, is an archaeological site where the waste from human occupation were deliberately dumped. The classic kitchen midden is located in a non-urban, often remote setting where prehistoric nomadic people of North and South America and the early inhabitants of Europe settled temporarily at a particular site, perhaps returning to the same spot every year and discarded food waste onto the soil. Over many decades or centuries, the midden developed a thick black organic rich top soil containing animal bones, mollusks, shells, seeds, and other plant material, along with charcoal, ash, and perhaps miscellaneous pottery shards, stone tools, etc. Such middens are common in coastal marine settings, but also can be found associated with bodies of fresh water, including the players of dry Pleistocene lakes and modern desert settings. The term midden is now used for any site where archaeological materials related to human habitation have been dumped. Middens are often distinguished according to their primary feature, shell midden, bone midden, ash midden, sheet midden, burnt rock midden, etc. Kitchen middens found in an urban context are sometimes referred to generically as dark earth. Middens are highly valued by archaeologists because they not only indicate sites of human occupation, but often provide a wealth of information about human behavior, living activities, and local ecology. Middens are generally localized sites ranging from 0.5 to several hectares in size, where domestic waste, typically associated with food preparation from one or more households, were deliberately dumped. The size of a midden is a function of population size and the length of time the site was active. A midden may be in the form of a pit, a mound, or a layer in a stratigraphic sequence. A kitchen maiden usually forms as a result of repeated episodes of dumping, but may be created by a single ceremonial feast. Its composition depends on local resources and the societal level of technological development. Middens commonly contain ash, charcoal, tools, ceramics, slag, construction materials, seeds, shell, and animal bone. Occasionally, human burials are present. The skeletons of Tasmania type men are found in the shell middens or mounds of Europe. The first inhabitants of Europe were known biblically as the children of Japhet, 